But tonight, our very own Adam Ladwig went to the Ralph Engelstead Arena for his first North Dakota men's hockey game. He joins us live to tell us what it's like to experience the Ralph for the first time. Adam, how was the night? Well, Molly and Rob, I've been told that the Ralph can be a rowdy place on game night, and let me tell you, the experience did not disappoint. Now, fans I talked to say the reason the team is so popular is because it's the only major team professional or college in Grand Forks, and that passion really shows during the game. Okay, Adam, you've been to a game, you've experienced the Ralph. At six, you said, since you're from Denver, you didn't know who to cheer for. Have you decided on a team yet? Well, once you go to a UND game and you see the passion that these fans have for their team, it's hard not to jump on the North Dakota bandwagon. The Center Cinema will always be a great place to watch movies, but with the digital upgrade, the building can be used for so much more. The Postal Service says it delivers 25% less first-class mail than it did in 2006. Most of the people I talked to today say when they check their mailbox, they rarely find it stuffed. Doyen is a small town with only around 35 residents. Tronson Grain is the only business in Doyen, and they say it was important to keep the new elevator in town. Lake levels froze this winter about a foot below last year's record high. Projections say there's about a 50% chance the lake will rise six inches this summer, but only a 20% chance will reach last year's record levels. Molly and Rob, the elders say they have the power to oust the entire tribal council because the council has not held a general assembly for them to formally express their concerns. Tribal elder Bernice Juarez called the meeting after tribal councilwoman Clarice Brownshield came forward with numerous charges of corruption on the part of the tribal council and government. Elders spent more than two hours detailing a long list of problems. They claim council members only help friends and relatives while leaving the reservation's infrastructure to crumble. Juarez says it was important to act after many of these allegations became public. This is the route that I figured that we, we could do. When I, what this today, when I, it's a hurry up meeting, but I wanted it to be done today. The elders say they're scheduling a meeting with the BIA superintendent tomorrow morning to discuss where to go from here. Adam, how likely do you think this is that uh, the vote will hold up? Well, the vote is going to be challenged. I've spoken with several tribal members who say the elders have no legal right to do this, and of course the tribal council is going to have something to say about it. I asked Juarez how much of a struggle it would be to uphold the elders' vote, and she said that it's up to God to decide. Well, JT was uh, just an outstanding young man. He had a passion for aviation, and he had a passion for the Lord. Local business owner Pat Tracy wanted to honor J.T. Rice after he died in a plane crash last year at just 23 years of age. So he contacted the group Pilots for Christ. Pilots for Christ is a non-denominational organization of pilots and non-pilots. Uh, we uh, serve those in need, in great need. The organization flies people to hospitals, funerals, or arranges for commercial travel. Pilots for Christ President Timothy Lane helped dedicate the J.T. Rice North Dakota chapter this weekend in Maddox. I know J.T. would just be very proud that his name is on, on the organization here in North Dakota. It was meant to be. This is the work of God and the inspiration of J.T. Rice was loved here in Maddox. At his funeral a year ago, there was over 600 people at that funeral. So the Maddox is 450 people. So you know there was a, a big turnout for that. Because of that love, his memory can now help people in need throughout North Dakota. And his story has a potential to affect literally hundreds of people through Pilots of Christ. One $2 ticket. I bought five. Or five, each one potentially being worth half a billion dollars. As of like today now, we're three times higher than we were yesterday already. Powerball excitement spreads fast. We'll see a lot of groups come in spending one or two hundred dollars at a time. Leavers County Market sells more lotto tickets than anyone else in Devil's Lake. Manager Frank Mack says sales tripled for this drawing and he expects tomorrow to be crazier. Tomorrow there will be a line. The last time was big at, at uh, certain times we had a couple dozen people in line. When they hear that jackpot number people who usually steer clear of Powerball are drawn in. Uh, because of the huge amount of money you could re you know, reap. With all the construction guys here, they're, you know, buying them. You know, it's like, oh, the power ball's up. Maybe we can win so we can go home. 
you get new players and regular players pulling together for a greater chance at success. Like a group of employees getting together. Players know the odds aren't in their favor, especially with more tickets than ever being scooped up. It's a jackpot. That's true. It, your odds do go down. Even though they're playing the game, they're not planning what to do with their fortune just yet. I haven't spent much time thinking about it.